Let's see. Rob, we are you watching five. Squid Game? I haven't started it yet. Oh. I tried to watch like a minute of it and like this, the dubbing threw me off a little bit. The, <laughs> so you're, you're listening to the English version. That's what I'm doing too. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't give uh, well, me an I, option otherwise. Yeah. I don't think they gave me an option either, but I watched you one get minute used of it. To it. I was like, I can't do this right now. I just, it was you, too like, well, groupy. that first scene is really jarring. You're like, this is this man's voice. He's like yelling at his old mother. Like I mm-hmm. hated it, but you get used to it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I like, I watch TV to like escape and be in the moment. And that stuff just reminds me that I'm watching a show every three seconds. Like, I'm like, Oh, this is good. Like I'm constantly out of it instead of like, I get wrapped up in it. Yeah. 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 That's part of the, part of the reason why like some people from work have been trying to get me to watch like and get into anime. (sighs) And uh, I've really tried really hard can you explain it's just people like dressed <laughs> yeah. up at like mini mouse like what's happening no and an, <laughs> anime is like Jap- <laughs> japanese animated shows like cartoons what did you think it was jamie Do you think it's like start cosplay there. or something <laughs> Maybe i want to know what yeah let's start with what jamie thinks anime is <laughs> Welcome to Pajama I'm, Pants. I'm not guys. even stoned, you guys. Welcome to Pajama Pants. This is Rob. I'm Shaman, and that's Jamie, who has no idea what. Anime is. <laughs> so, what did you think anime was, Jamie? Just like strange, like young doll-looking costumes. You're not that's far cosplay. off. Cosplay. Yeah, but you're thinking of like real physical people. Anime is yes. like hard, cartoon. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. So after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by all these big wireless providers, I've learned nothing except that there's always a catch. So when we first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month, I obviously thought, what's the catch? But after speaking with them and using their service personally, it's all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. So it cuts out the retail stores, no crazy overhead costs. They get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings directly to you. Right, Cass? Yep, that's right, guys. Um, I use (laughs) Mint Mobile. Um, I don't pay big premium uh, cellular carrier prices anymore. I pay $15 a month. Um, this is for my second phone, just by the way. 15 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month to have all my ladies and my girlfriends on one single phone. Hell yeah, do. And, um, I highly recommend it. If you guys are looking for something that's, um, cheap and easy and works to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash pajama. That's mintmobile.com slash pajama. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash pajama. Pajama. So we've talked about, and we will talk actually about on this pod, the importance of pleasuring yourself and, and pleasure and what gets you in the mood and what gets you aroused, you know, at nighttime, what's your nightly ritual? You know, for Cass and I, we love to be tied up and tucked in, right, Cass? <laughs> <laughs> so Dipsy Absolutely. Stories is here to close the loop on your bedtime routine or any time of day and help you create an exciting new one. Tell them what it is, Cass. Yeah, uh, Dipsy is an app that has, um, how do I say this? Erotic stories. Sexy audio it. stories. It's sexy audio stories. You can filter them by uh, what you're into. Um, and like for me, I put in uh, I put in boy, girl, and then I put in girl, girl. And then, and then you put in and then I put in boy, boy, and, it, <laughs> and then it filters out all the stories that kind of hit the things that you're into and they're really well done and they're fun to listen to on your own. Or if you have a girlfriend, a wife, a husband, partner, um, it's a great way to get in the mood. Yeah. For listeners of Pajama Pants, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash pajama. So guys, go and get 30 days for free and see if you like it. What's the problem? That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash pajama. Dipsy stories.com slash pajama. Pajama. Now time to start the pod. Enjoy the show. Sometimes it's like sexualized. Here's my thing. And I think it's exactly what you said. 
it's it's hard for me to get into because there's something lost in translation from the Asian country to here. And it's not like succession where it's all like super sarcastic and like I'm right in tune with the comedy of it and I get Mm -hmm. it. Whereas when it's animation, all the jokes are like right on the nose because it's, you know, it's from another country. So there's not as much room for subtlety and sarcasm and everything's bigger. And also like the cartoon style is a little jarring and it's like, you know, and it's yeah, like, none well, of that was it. very Saturday morning y though. I feel like I had I watched so many cartoons like that when I was little. Yeah, it's true. Right. Yeah, but yeah. this this has something that didn't have the stuff when we were little, which th- did it start with like the Powerpuff Girls that that like ching, that thing you just did with, like, I don't know where it started, and it's but like, it's like lightning coming off of them. It almost, just didn't like, start in this country. Whatever. Right. You know, yeah. Twin powers them. activate. Is that something that's anime? No, sure. Yeah. And you're asking the wrong guys. <laughs> yeah. We have no idea. You're asking the wrong guys. I feel like oh, we, we I feel like it's been so long since we've done a pod because the three of us haven't done one in a while. Or just yeah, we've had us. some guests. Yeah, Look, I'm, we're glad to be uh, in an intimate setting with you guys. I've got some emails. Rob's got his Sharpies. Um, I haven't talked to you in a few days. I feel like we got a lot to catch up on. Oh, you got stuff? I got no. nothing. No, no, I got nothing. OK, yeah. Yamie, here's here's what I want to know from both of you. What, how do you guys feel? Because I heard this earlier and I just forgot this was even a thing because I've lived alone for so long. How do you feel about using other people's toothbrush? No, I don't like it, but I'll do it if I have to. But just cutters. Yes. I don't like it. The thought of somebody like chunks of somebody's food or something in Ugh. my mouth is disgusting. That being said, my somebody I'm dating, if I had the option to do that or no brush teeth, I would use their toothbrush. Yeah. And I'll just like, you know, do that thing with your thumb and just really get in there with it. That rinse works. it out. That Put works. your dirty yeah. finger in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it, how do okay. You definitely don't. Oh, disgusting. You would rather just skip brushing. Uh, yeah. Or go to a store and get a toothbrush. Oh, I didn't know that was an option. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, it's we're real still life. Feeling right? like there's no options here. No, I'm saying like you're home and something like your toothbrush falls in the toilet. You don't have one. So you're like, I think most people would just go mm-hmm. like, or there are a lot of people who just go like, oh, I would use this other person's where for me, right. it's like I, I no. would do. I, th- there's always a store open. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't go to the store. I think if it was late <laughs> at night because it's right before bed, I wouldn't have the energy to go to the store to do it. No, oh, I'd I like never. rinse heavily with water or mouthwash or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could never. I've I could also never. fallen asleep. Many nights of my life without brushing my teeth. Sure. Back in the day, I used to all the time. Now I haven't done it in like five years where like I do it every day when I wake up every day before bed. Yeah, before yeah. I did Invisalign, you know, the post Invisalign. You do that every pass. night. Oh yeah, I mean, I got a, I got a water flosser. I'm doing the whole thing. After Are I you eat. wearing one right now? No, I'm done with it. I just wear the retainers at night. Oh, it yeah. was fun when he had it though. He came to visit me in Vegas, and before he would eat, he would take some like toilet paper and take them out and put them on. Uh, he hates on it. The, yeah, on he the table. Oh, that was yeah, cool. Of course, he I liked it. <laughs> How, I, I like to use other people's Invisalign. That's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what you would yeah. do. Yeah. Outside of Jamie, obviously, your answer is going to be like my husband and then children. Outside right. of that, if you had to pick three people whose toothbrush, like who are the top three people? Because at first I was like, oh, well, probably my mom, right? Because like my head was in a vagina. So you might as well just like make the connection of like, yeah, I'll brush my teeth with a toothbrush. But now I'm like, whoa. I don't know. I, it's tough. It's real tough on who's toothbrush. Other than use. Cutter and my kids. Right. Because that's without that, that would obviously be your one, two and three. Right. Maybe not Jack. Uh. He's a little crazy. He's got yeah. gaps in his teeth. You could fit big chunks. Took a of shit food. in the woods today. Um, nice. Uh, you definitely be one of mine. <laughs> Thanks, uh. Definitely. That makes me feel good. Yeah, you clean. You're clean. <laughs> Yeah, you, you take good care of yourself. I'd be like, this is a yeah, but not his toothbrush. His toothbrush is what gets him clean. This is true. How often do you change your toothbrush? Uh, I'm not great at that. Like probably I'm like not great four times a year, maybe. Yeah, I feel like it's supposed to be a lot more than that. Okay, I think you're supposed to do every month, right? No one does that. No one. Let me ask you this question: <laughs> Where do you keep your toothbrush? Well, here's the thing: I used to keep it in in the cabinet but then i started thinking like oh it'll probably get mold because it's dark in there because i put it in there wet and then shut it and it's too dark oh. so now i 
Now I keep it. You have an electric one? No, I have. Uh, oh, that's uh, surprising. Like a big so one. Old school. What? Yeah. So what's a big, big one? one? What's a big like one? A, well, he, like a clown like a, one? Like a hairbrush? <laughs> <laughs> like the one in the dentist's office? <laughs> like a novelty? Like a big red one? No, yeah. no, it is. It's like it's almost like the size of your thumb. The I brush. want a picture. Can you send Gabby a picture of this? It's almost please? the size of your thumb. Yeah, because it, you you brush your teeth in like half the time. <laughs> what? You brush your teeth in half the time because it covers a bigger area. Circa area. Oh, uh, I by use, the way, I, exaggerate. I use a, How like big? a sonic hair or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the size of my thumb. Yeah, like like right here. You're saying the bristles. Yeah. Are two inches. It might even be a little bigger than that. It's what? round. That would hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This so, could be the craziest thing you've ever told. Well, me. that's the thing. This was one of those things on I when I I thought I talked about it on here, but I guess I didn't. I talked about it on uh, where my mom's at, Christina P's podcast, who, by the way, had a Pajitsky effect on your mom's house this week where she she was a fan of Sopranos from uh, back in the day. And I guess like my character all the time, like, oh, AJ, AJ, AJ. But my name is Anthony. So it's like, oh, they're, they're, AJ stands for Anthony Jr. Yeah. Uh -huh. And oh, she's okay. like, oh, I didn't know. She was like, after watching the show for like 15 years, she just thought like my but real I feel name like, was AJ. I feel like Carmela only called you Anthony. Like she never said AJ. She was Anthony. No, but other, right. And then other people would be like AJ. Right. I called you AJ only. Right. So, I knew your name was Anthony. Well, I didn't know. Clearly, that she's not that big a fan. Right. Well, she just chalked it up to being very dumb. She also thought. <laughs> She said that she thought boneless buffalo wings, like boneless chicken wings, somebody actually like took the meat off the bone for every single one of them. Oh. What is it? And that's how they were made. Well, it's like Christina, it's, you beautiful, dumb. What bastard. is it? I well, agree with boneless, her. boneless chicken wings are usually like pieces of chicken just breaded with like like little almost like smaller like chicken. I, nuggets thought, I thought they took the bone out, too. Of each of each single one. Yeah. But didn't you know, like you see the way like the drumstick is shaped and then you see like a boneless chicken finger. You've seen a wing. It's got like two <laughs> the tibia and a fibia in there. Yeah. Yeah. With chicken in between it. And what a boneless. So if it was boneless. Like. If it was boneless, you'd be getting like French like a chicken, fry finger. chicken strips. We're talking okay. like, OK, let me ask you this. What's mm -hmm. the difference between a nugget and a boneless wing? Nuggets well, the, are little balls, right? The the nuggets are like minced up chicken parts, mm -hmm. right? And then a yeah. wing is an actual piece of it's cut up pieces <laughs> of chicken. <laughs> we, we are so stupid, dude. <laughs> it's like you take a chicken breast and you cut it up, right? And then you bread that. So you're asking, what is a chicken wing? No, no, I know. Right, a chicken wing is the the part no, that no, part of the chicken a nugget versus a, a boneless, boneless wing, right? A boneless chicken thing is usually like chicken breast pieces or like the chicken tender part cut up breaded and then bu hit with the buffalo hit wow. hit with it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Hit me with it. yeah yeah but a, a, a chicken wing would be really tough to make boneless because once you <laughs> take the bones out there's bare there's like little strips <laughs> <laughs> sinewy bits of chicken and that would be tough to just bread on your own and it would also be okay. kind of weird like the the drumstick like making that boneless there would be, would be weird. <laughs> it would be weird yeah I stand oh you my favorite so what, what were is, we talking about is, where did this come from is there squid a game. crime would you say Amy? squid game <laughs> she's watching she's watching squid game is there a crime that I could commit where you, if I like killed somebody. Okay. Or if I, is there something I could do that is would Wine be Shank dead in this house right now? If, no, not <laughs> okay. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on my answer. It depends. <laughs> would you turn me in or would you rat on me for a crime I committed? And like, what would that crime have to be if yes? Like, here's the deal. If you were smart about it and you said like casino style, like, yo, come meet me in the desert. And I drove up. Yeah. And you we, you walked out. We had no cell phones. And you were like, hey, here's what I did. I'd be like, I never heard this. What do you need? Okay. Blah, blah, blah. But, but the, the, in here where there's like 80 billion appliances and like everything you have is on camera. And this, right. if you were like, hey, I killed wine shank. I, I don't know, man. It would be tough because I would think I'm, right. I'm, 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 I'm already done. 
They're watching. That's incredible. That's a that's a lot. You'd be that willing to become lot. an accomplice. Yeah. Oh, in the desert for sure. Whatever you what told me. Whatever you told me. Yeah. What I got. Yeah. 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 I mean, you've hinted. I believe that you knew who was responsible for 9-11 before. I'm just saying. And I didn't tell anyone until now. I'm just saying I lived in Saudi Arabia for four years of my life. It's possible I met a couple of those hijackers. That's what I'm saying. I lived in Florida for a few years. I never brought that up. Where do those hijackers (laughs) train? Florida. Connections, man. Saudi. Follow the money. Go straight to Saudi Arabia. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. Yami, here's what I want to know. If you so you know (laughs) I love you so much, Jamie. If you were a stripper, what would your shtick be? You know how like they like there's like the the schoolgirl or like the dominatrix right. or like yeah. they had they all have this thing and, and I just want to two that I've seen that were very funny that stand out to me are one is like the the race car girl who's like in the the suit like the flame retardant suit and yeah. like that whole thing yeah and then another one I think I saw this in a movie somewhere where like it's the like the robot. You know, like you come out and you're and it's like, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like, oh, that's you, aggressive. Yeah, that's not good sexy. Like, <laughs> actual I don't movie. know what. What? <laughs> yeah. Give me some ideas. You got to think. I mean, I'll tell you what I would pick for you. It would be a yeah. mommy and you come out with like the baby Bjorn on oh. and the fucking stroller. And then like you yeah. kick it off the stage, you rip off the baby Bjorn and all your clothes come off with it. And then it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's a I good like one. the librarian. I like the sexy librarian it's not on brand for me. I don't really read. Some um, women used to come out to like hot. It's a character, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> yeah, she's playing someone who like kills people now in Big Sky. And she's like, no, nah, I couldn't couldn't yeah. do a librarian. Can't picture it. All the books. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Hot for teacher used to be one that yeah. Ben Helen song and it come out like dressed like the teacher. That shit guy gets the crowd going. I would do like a really shy girl. Oh, OK. Like a really timid, like shy what, who's shy girl? Is this? Hold on. I think this might be Christina P. Yo. <laughs> hold on. Wait, you got to see what's going on here. Am I on PJ? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're, you're on PJ pants. But here's here's what's going on. So I said to Jamie, we were talking about your Pazitsky effect. Oh, let me get. I shouldn't talk to the mic out. Uh, we're talking about your Pazitsky effect. And I said, you thought AJ Anthony Jr. Like it wasn't it, it wasn't like, oh, she's so dumb. Didn't go overall. But then I said, the buffalo wing thing that you thought <laughs> that they <laughs> they just got taken out. And Jamie was like, what? That's not what they do. <laughs> if they're not what they say they are, call them nuggets then. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I don't think she could hear Jamie. Okay. Oh, she can't hear me. I was like, she's she's not. I'm about to go on stage. Sorry. <gasps> <laughs> Go crush it, mommy. Crush it. Bring the house down. Let me. I am so into your guys' world. I'm so about pajama pants. You have no idea. I'm, it's not healthy. All right. I love you guys. Okay. Have a good time. Love seven. you. Bye, Christina. She's the best. From the beginning of like us being like tiny adults, right? Skin problems can ruin your day, your week. You, you don't want to leave the house. It can really affect everything. It's the way you present yourself. It it really can mess with you. And, you know, the idea now of people like going to doctor's appointments, we're not taking care of ourselves as much. We're not putting ourselves out there. So to have this company apostrophe, it's a prescription skincare company that offers science backed oral and topical medications that are prescribed, but you do this all online, right? Cass? Yeah, I actually have a skincare routine now, which is crazy to say out loud, but I do. Um, And it didn't require any visits to a dermatologist or anything. I just took pictures of my face. Okay. And I sent it in online to apostrophe.com. I created an account, sent in these photos. And within an hour, I got an email back from a certified dermatologist Mm -hmm. that said, Hey, hey, Cass, uh, saw your pictures. Really handsome, by the way. She didn't say that, but she did recommend what uh, skincare I should be using and even prescribed some. Um, I put it in my shopping cart. I got it delivered in a few days. And now I have a morning and a nighttime skincare routine and it helps me, uh, keeps me looking good. And we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash pajama. When you use our code pajama, 
This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash pajama and click begin visit. Then use our code pajama at sign up and you'll get the first visit for only $5. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash pajama. And use that code pajama to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for $5. And we thank apostrophe.com for sponsoring the podcast and for proving I can read. That's good. You're a great speller. Thanks. Hey, Kasim, is your dick hard <laughs> right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, e- but ever? it can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it could use some help. I think we have. Who just couldn't? The thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you know, you so yeah, you confidence know, confidence some- just takes you so far in life, especially when your dick is hard. Yeah. <laughs> God, Jamie. Whoa, you just opened up some door in my brain that just That's I don't know if incredible. there's any coming back. No way. Now, if I wasn't hard before, I am now. Yeah. Guys, Just the copy of Blue Chew's <laughs> ad yeah. copy got me going. We're talking about Blue Chew tablets, dude. Kasim, Kasim, before they even became a sponsor, Kasim was a big supporter yeah. of Blue Chew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a customer, um, mainly because of how discreet and easy it was and the fact that it worked. It, Explain it what Blue Chew is. Well, Blue Chew is... For those that uh, don't know. Yeah, it's got all the active ingredients that you'd find in Viagra and Cialis, uh, but it's available in a chewable tablet and doesn't require a doctor visit. I did everything online. Um, and then in a few days, I got a package, a discreet package in the mail. And now I have uh, Viagra grade chewable tablets um, at a fraction of the cost of what Viagra was and now I have the ability to have some pretty powerful erections uh, on a moment's notice. You know who did need a doctor's visit? The chick you were banging. That's right. Oh God. She okay. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code pajama at checkout. Just pay five dollars in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code pajama to receive your first month free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank blue chew for sponsoring the podcast. What would Gabby's stripper thing be? Oh, Gabby would be like the, uh, like she'd be a sweatshop girl, you know, (laughs) she'd come out with a little (laughs) tiny little sewing machine. She'd be making shoes and shit. (laughs) Come out and like, first of all, she, (laughs) She disassemble a pair of Nikes. I thought you say, I say she would come out on the stage in a little boat. <laughs> oh, no, like no. this, like rowing. <laughs> yeah, she'd be trying to get like a green card, all sexy, like like a children's kayak. Yeah. Oh my god, it's terrible. Terrible. Oh man, it's good though. It's good. It's you know? good to be potting. So yeah, you're gonna watch Squid are, Game? We are potting. Am I gonna watch Squid Game? I don't know. I just like I also <laughs> it's don't really like stressing me out. I don't like things when everyone's like, you gotta do this now. It makes me be like, ugh. Yeah. It's so, I, can I ask a question? Please. Please. So, <laughs> <laughs> we so whenever, are potting. This is a whenever pod. whenever sex comes on a screen, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a thing. You cover your kids' eyes. You send them out of the room. But if there's like violence and fucking Mm. like you never make your kid look away at a certain age, 10 years old, they play Call of Duty, whatever. But like, God forbid, they see people fucking make out and have sex. Yeah. What is this? What is going on? I think I'm realizing this as a parent, like violence in schools is acceptable. Sex is not. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. is what that you, America? Is that like our culture? OK, Jamie, what do we do? Do we make it so they can't see violence at all? Or do we make it so they also get to see the sex? What's the right? Well, move? I mean, I feel like they're not desensitized to violence, but like understand that like it happens. But like sex is made to feel like this, like really like, mm-hmm. you know, terrible, naughty thing that we're not supposed to know about. We're not supposed to talk about or experiment with. I mean, I feel like there's some type of shift happening, but I don't know. I was just thinking about, you know, things that because Bo's in at this age where he's always asked me, like, can I watch this or can I watch this? And I have to, like, explain why or when. And a lot of the time it's because, like, the 
adult subject matter is like sex and shit like that. But yeah. like violence is not where the line is drawn, I guess. With, with violence also is like, it's not just what you watch because he's also playing video games. And like, yeah. for the most part, those are violent. Like you would have to really so cut down on the amount of stuff he's doing. Well, I took away Roblox and I took away Whoa. a what lot he, of stuff. What like, did he all do? He did plays, he murder someone? I got to sell up my stock. <laughs> That's yeah. All, yeah. all That's he plays punishment. now is Rocket League and MLB oh, yeah. Show and Madden. And he's completely content with that. Well, here's the deal, right? In Europe, I feel like four-year-old kids are like drinking wine, watching porn, and they're less violent well, it's than on, people like, in America. It's on right? public TV mm-hmm. porn on certain channels. Well, what here's here's the fucking million dollar question. What would you be more upset if Bo walked in on Cutter beating you or fucking you? I mean, it's would I be more upset? Like, what would you be like beating me? Yeah, Yeah. because you enjoy the sex and not the beating. Well, you know, we've talked about this. No, um, no. Yeah, well. What do you think would what do you think would scar Bo more? Forget what if, about you. What if what he was choking you me. and having sex with you? <laughs> that might be confusing. <laughs> that happened. <Yeah. laughs> that might be kind of confusing for him. That's fucked up. So, yeah. What uh, do you think would scar Bo more? Walking in on on his dad hitting his mom yes, or having yes, sex with him? Yes, him hurting me, of course. Yeah, but I, here's the thing, right? Like he hits uh, his brother all the time. They're like fighting all the time. So like, I don't know. I'm not saying the answer is uh, uh, the other way. I'm just saying maybe yeah. it's not so obvious. Yeah, he should be fucking his brother, not hitting him. <laughs> Damn. They were comparing penis size in the bath the other day. I walked in on it. What? I hope Bo won. Wow, it was oh, close. No shit. Well, Jack, we know things about Jack. Yeah, but he's two years old. Bo's he's playing three. black three. ops. Jack has got a <laughs> he's got an eighth grade dick level. Well, yeah. Imagine the doctor comes out like, wow, it says here, uh, yeah. Jack's got an eighth Maybe grade. He's like, dick he's level. like his he's high like high weight schooler. is 60th percentile and his penis is 95th. Yeah. <laughs> yes, his penile weight is in the 98th percentile. <laughs> I don't know if he should be doing that. That's gonna give Bo a complex, especially if his younger brother is I like, didn't ask them to. I walked out I to like know. make dinner and came back in and like overheard the conversation. He's like, mommy, do you think personality is pretty important? <laughs> Jamie's like, Jamie's like, all right, I'm going to put the vegetables in. Don't you guys go comparing penis sizes now? Exactly. Uh, Mom, there's more to the. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say. It. Well, no, it just in my head. I was like, maybe I should have Bo like shower by himself now. What um girls like funny guys, right, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I was trying to figure out. If because I saw something like this recently and I want to know, would, yeah. would you be able to date somebody if from straight on when you were looking at them, they were gorgeous, like a an eight, like let's say eight and a half, maybe even or let's say eight is good. Uh-huh. I don't know if eight is gorgeous. I think eight at point five is where you start hitting gorgeous. But right. let's, let's not debate that now. But but then like profile, they were like a two. Oh, what's wrong with the profile? It's just something about like, like they seem a like a dud. No, it's somebody who's better straight on. No, I'm nose, better straight on. Or nose or like the maybe the jaw like comes out a little or there's like a weird shape oh. of the chin from the oh. side. I don't know. Just something where it's like, ooh, from the side. This, But you're like straight on. I find them so unbelievably attractive. But from the side, it's just I feel gross. like I look like three different people straight on or either profile. I feel the same way. I I I really like myself straight on as opposed to profile because that's really just when this guy. I mean, it's. It I have two different lot. profiles though. Left. And I right. broke my nose. Yeah, my left side <laughs> yeah. is very different than my right side. Oh. Yeah, my nose is crooked. I have so like I, a straight I, here and a bump this way. Which one do you prefer? The straight one. Oh really? Left. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Turn the other way. Okay, turn the other way. I don't know. Yeah, I can't. You've never you noticed that about me? Like, no. Oh, well. and that's the thing. No one pays attention to that kind of stuff. That small stuff. You guys are. You're just saying it. Yeah, but not to you, Yami Lee. About ourselves, oh. we pay attention to it. You know, <laughs> I think you're beautiful from every angle. You broke your nose in the car thing, right? Yes. In high school. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Good times, man. High school's. Ka- so Kasim's much. like, man, how come I couldn't have broke my nose in high school? Gosh. 
It's like, I wish maybe if I broke my nose. You said you have a crooked nose? Yeah, my nose. See, I never knew that. It goes one way. It goes, I forget, I think it goes this way. Do you ever think about getting the surgery inside where they can make it straight? I don't give a shit. If I fixed one thing, I would just be another thing. I mean, I have a long list of things that would need to be fixed. So I don't. Why can't you fix them? You fix the teeth. Yeah, teeth is different. It's easy. It's like uh, teeth, you know, but like if I'm going to start going under the knife, that's a whole other world to me. Right. It's not easy. It's just not invasive. Right. Because it sounds like the nose thing would be much easier than the teeth thing. You were taking those things in and out for what? Six months. Exactly. I think I think straight teeth is Mm. different than us. Like what we think straight. A, a good nose. A, a good nose to me is yeah. Bad teeth can objective. really mess Subjective. mess things up. Bad yeah. teeth you can see a mile away. A nose yeah. like I kind of like my nose from certain angles. It's like it's big. There's some chicks that are into like big noses. There's like a there's a somebody for me, you know. But like the glasses the, help. The glasses help. The the acne pop marks on my skin. But the, the what teeth, are those? Those are checks against me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. You're sandbagging, yeah, yeah. but the exactly, but okay. but the uh, the crooked teeth is something you know. It's tough to swallow unless you're in a culture that, uh, like you know, not saying currently, but in like Britain, a lot of people have kind of crooked teeth, or maybe don't have the same sort of level of high the dental hygiene that we have here, and so it's more they need acceptable. Rob's toothbrush. Yeah. It would get things done a lot faster. Our friends yeah. that are listening to this in the UK, just like you blew their mind with this toothbrush, this big toothbrush idea. Yeah, it wasn't my idea. I wish it was my idea. But we, I, when I first saw it, I was like, why wouldn't I use a bigger toothbrush? Wouldn't that make brushing my teeth e- so much easier? I hate you guys brushing floss. my teeth. I have those those things, those flossers. So you I do. But them? like if I actually had to, yeah, I use them. But if I actually had to do the rope stuff, I can't. I can't. Never, I, can't I, never my, I hate the floss. rope stuff. I, hate I the rope. never floss. Be like a serial killer when you're like, you know, like you're wrapping it around your and then also um, a water flosser, by the way, I use those little water pick pick. things, but a water pick makes everything 10 times easier. It's just like another step to do, though. There is another step. Yeah. Jamie, you I mean, your teeth are great. Whatever you're doing works. Are they? Yeah, you definitely have Uh good teeth. Very great. Great great color. Huh, what okay yeah, if somebody if if you were going to get a car and then somebody somehow like surprised you with a car just in general like what do you think is the worst color if somebody was like i got you a car and then like you went outside and you were like purple. oh my god it's oh no way for me not even close especially if it's a nice car purple purple you could manage i think yeah. brown cars are the most disgusting brown brown cars are just Oh my God. Here's the thing. Brown. I haven't seen, you don't see many brown. Cars yeah, there's a reason. When well, you see like, it, it makes you write it down for the pod. Yellow. I saw one. No yellow. Yellow's bad if it's a bad car, but if it's a really nice car, it's Depends like, oh, you could, no. you could get away with it. Brown, it doesn't matter. Piece of shit, disgusting, really nice car. You're like, what are you doing? But what if it's like one of those, like uh, Toyota TRD, like sand? Those like sort of matte sand color, muted sand. Those are brown. Okay. Those well, cool. matte makes anything okay. I think when when it, when it has that yeah. like matte. Look. It's like a flat, maybe not matte, but it's like a flat color, which yeah. are really popular. Well, I like, like purple your... as a bad color. Ew. I hate purple. Oh, no, okay. I'm saying I hate Great. purple. I like that answer. Oh, I don't think you. I could drive a purple car. No. <laughs> right. But all. see, if it was like if it was some insane car like i think driving around a purple car is like well because it's already insane right like yeah it's a crazy super nice like yeah like a lambo in purple like maybe if i was bam margera but imagine like, if it was brown like no, just brown like lambo. regular brown regular brown make, no do they even make a brown lamborghini uh i'm sure somebody has one but they don't make it when know. you're paying that much money i hope when you get a lamborghini they're like what color would you like you know what it is yeah. it's like during yeah. the 70s and 80s every car was brown champagne regular brown yeah. light brown it was like and every car sucked dick back then <laughs> you know and then we and had then a lot we of red cars color. growing up my my parents had red cars red's okay and especially like if you have a fast car red's cool too my dad had like a f- interesting bluish green once a sob convertible well i didn't like that one I feel like red's just fine. I feel like red is like, it's not for me. It's not great. So I feel like just if I'm going to get a car, it would be like white or black, probably. 
Yeah, I think that's most people. Yeah. I think you, know, yeah. you see most cars because you can't really go wrong with either of those colors. When you start making a choice. And it would just be black. I wouldn't even get a white car. It would just be black. I think the top three are like white, black, and blue. Mm-hmm. I think people Is it do not like, silver? Oh, me, silver. That's a great, yeah, that's a great call. You know, all the neutral yeah. colors. And then blue is like your first real pop of color. Jamie, as, as a mom, are there things you're jealous of about like Cutter being a dad that you're like, oh, I wish, like, I, I want that. Like, you know, that like it's different for dads than moms. Uh, they don't go to him for food. Like they don't think to go to him for like things because like, you, you cook. That's what you're saying. Like, yeah. Or just like, I get their lunches, right? Like I just like, if I'm not here, he'll do it. But, and like, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he does a lot. He does a lot. I don't want to, of course he does. I'm I don't want to dog on him. No, I'm not no I mean, no, I can't think of anything. I think I'm reaching with even with that. No, it's pretty even at this house. But never like, you know, like you see like, you know, cutters like body slamming them and you're like, oh, I wish they would like wrestle with me or. Like, oh, no. Or like, is there any shit that they'll pull with you that you're like, huh, how come they would never pull this shit with you? Right. No, it's I think after quarantine, it really became like an even playing field where I just feel like we both get the shit. We go get the good like they kind of. They kind of trade off like who they're feeling that week or not. Like we we become one of their favorites at different times. It works out. I wish I didn't have his guilt. I mean, I wish I could not have guilt. He can like not care if he's seen them for a minute or like whatever. <laughs> like I like lock in my head Hard like, all. oh, I haven't spent like any time with them. Like I'm already being like, I know I'm leaving next week for filming and I'm going to be away from Jack all Saturday because he was like, come out to dinner with me and my boss and all my people are coming into town on Friday. And I was like, no, I'm going to be with Jack on Friday Uh because I'm barely seeing him Saturday. I'm probably going to have to fly out Sunday and I'm going to be gone all week. Like, no, I'm going to be with him Friday night. But like, he doesn't think that way. Do you ever do that with girls like girls you're dating? If you know they're going to be gone for a few days, do you feel like you have to get you have to oh, see yeah. them or spend more time with them before time. they go. Of course. Yeah. Sweetheart. Right. Sweet guy. I thought that's just what everyone did. I could not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, what would you like to do? I'd like to just be alone forever and be <laughs> happy with it. We got a new sponsor. And if I was ever going to fall off the wagon, these would be <laughs> the guys who I did it with. This is where I would start. Yeah. The end. Yeah. Yep. First leaf. First Leaf. If you want to know what First Leaf is, it's a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. It's really cool. So they introduce you to tons of new wines and you can rate them. And then First Leaf kind of figures out your palate, what you're liking, and will send you a new box of curated wines and they just keep getting better. And here's a fun little not so secret about First Leaf. They work directly with winemakers, which makes you get incredible wine 60% off retail. We know how much it can be jacked up. We got our first box and Cutter's kind of a wine snob and he has loved everything. There has not been a bottle of wine that he hasn't liked. First Leaf is like what we want dating apps to be. Like when I say to enough girls who look a certain way, stop sending those girls my way. You know what I mean? Learn from what I'm telling you. Yeah. And that's what First Leaf does. You rate the wines and then they go, hey, I think this guy's going to like this. And then they send it to you. And you know what? According to Cutter Dykstra, they've been right so far. That's right. You let them use their algorithm on you. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free Ooh. shipping. It seems too good to be true. Just yeah. go to tryfirstleaf.com slash pajama. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 so cool. and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash pajama. Support the people that support the show. Get your drink on. Bienvenidos to all our <laughs> listeners out there. I Here's the truth, babe. I wanted to get on here and learn Jordanian. They didn't have it. Can you believe that? I think it's just for now they don't have it. Arabic. Okay, yeah, because yeah. they are incredible. And might I say, a bonjour, a senorita uh, Dijkstra. Wow. <laughs> oh, have you a been using Babbel? A bonjourno, a senorita uh, Gemelli. That is Look really at good. this. Sounds Thank like you. Rob has been using Babbel. Babbel has 15 minute lessons that make it the perfect way to learn a new language 
on the go for all his Uber rides, just listening, right, Rob? Sure. There are other language, other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans. With Babel, lessons were created by over 100 language experts. They have speech recognition technology that helps you improve your pronunciation, your accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babel. In addition to the lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. And plus, it comes with a 20 day money back guarantee. Yep. It's actually really fun to use. Um, mm-hmm. I did like five lessons back to back to back. You get to click and you get to hear the word as long and you read it and it all kind of helps connect in a fun way that doesn't seem like you're actually like being forced to learn a language. And then you turn yeah. on your microphone and then you speak and they tell you like, yeah, you said it yeah. right. I did. Yeah. I did like a bunch of Italian lessons and I really enjoyed it. Yep. The app is really slick right now. When you purchase a three month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months. Oh, wow. That's six months total. Yeah. You get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babble.com and use promo code pajama. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code pajama. Babble. Language for life. For life. You guys, look how long my nails are. Now. Those are real. We're pod. <laughs> this is good pod. Guys, hey, for, for the 10,000 people who are just listening, I'd say they're uh, they're decently long. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're Whoa. good scratching nails right now. <laughs> oh, oh, see the, uh, the see see that's what's unfair. You get girls could just do scalp. something like that and like I'm melting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, you I just... I walk by anyone and I just scratch I any of my kids or cutter and they'll all go. Like yeah. they just kind of stop in their tracks and like yeah. melt into it. It's the best. You have a little scratch. It's like a little power you have. You guys want to read an email? Go yes. for it. Okay. Um Here's also I wanted to point out. Um, oh, I got my my bill back from the hospital. Oh, really? From your fingy? What happened? Yeah. This is after insurance. Where are we at? Uh, so I got I have both answers. Let's. Oh yeah, I can't wait to. So hear. I walked in. They did nothing. Then they put me on a chair and they put glue on me. And it wasn't even a fucking doctor. It was a student who was like, <laughs> like all fucking nervous and everything. Uh-huh. Two thousand dollars. <gasps> Oh, that's less than I thought. Fucking scumbag. They they put glue. And by the way, 12 times they were like, do you want aspirin? Do you want aspirin? I'm like, why do they keep asking? Wait, that's if I want what asp- you're paying or that's what it. The no, 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 that was the whole thing. Paid. I think I have to pay like twelve hundred. Whoa. Yeah. Fun, fun stuff. But, but because I haven't done anything in the if hospital. You had, or whatever, so, so it's my you, like if they gave you Tylenol, it would have been like what? Like four hundred yeah, bucks. That's why I was like, oh, like, why did they keep asking me if I want Tylenol? And somebody said, and I think I actually remembered like in the moment when I was sitting there when things were so crazy that they charge you like, I think the markup is something like 120 times the price that like a wow. aspirin is, is what they charge in the hospital. Yeah. It's fucking sc- And they kept saying, like, you want an aspirin? And I was like, no, I don't. Like, they're like, you want Tylenol? We can give you like Tylenol three or like, or I was like, no, I don't get away from me. Those pill I'm pushers, pushing it. man. By the way, I'd like to say to our listener that thinks I'm nasty that I put the same pistachios in the same cup. I have two cups today. Wow, Jamie, two cups, two cups. For those of you that uh, and also you know that we listen to your comments and then we obsess about them. Yeah. And people also think that Jamie looks at her phone during the pod. She doesn't. She's like, look, are you looking at your nails? I peel. I look at my nails. I'm peeling paint. Yeah. You peel paint off the chair, right? Yep. Not looking at my phone. Motherfuckers, people are. Oh, oh, Daniel Kelly, go back to that. That was the person. That's so weird that that's that's who that email is from. So I got. Uh, we asked people to give us um ratings on iTunes, and I went through all of them, and I'm like, I should read one on there. So to say thank people for this, or I don't even know if I wanted to read one. I just thought this one really stuck out, and I wanted you guys to hear it. This person said, "iTunes, the result is more than the sum of the parts." The result of this podcast is more than the sum of the parts. That's a great, that's a great compliment. It's what? such. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I'm Daniel trying, Kelly, I'm... it, it wasn't lost on me and Cassim. He's saying like the the podcast when the three of us come together to do the podcast, it's better than just the three of us. You know, like we're not just. It's like Captain yeah. Planet, Jamie. Yeah, the sum when of us is activate. better than just the three exactly. of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I something. Water. Something comes. <laughs> that heart kid was such a pussy, by the way. Biggest heart. Hot heart. Yeah, the kid was in the closet. Um, do you want to? Re- should I read this? Go for email it. From this yeah. is from the same person. That's crazy. Hey, I'll, I'll skip past the typical fanboy mouth hugs. 
You guys should consider shaking down large corporations who don't want to be associated with your podcast. Oh, this is good. Just start firing off uncomfortable, over-the-top bits and periodically interject with, this episode's brought to you by Lowe's. Wow. It'd be fun to see how long it takes a senior executive to cut you a check <laughs> to stop saying their name. <laughs> Don't let the fact that this is a terrible idea stand in the way of that sweet blue chip money. I believe in you feloniously yours, Dan, the man. That's a great idea. This remi- podcast is brought to you by giant toothbrushes. That's yes, right. that, that email was brought to you by Nabisco. <laughs> Didn't that happen with the Jersey Shore where like people like they told they paid Snooki to not walk around with like a Gucci handbag or something. Oh my God. No way. She was wa- like making the brand look trashy by wearing, wearing the, the handbag. <laughs> I thought you were going to see, they paid them to do the third season in Miami to just like not be associated. Get off with the Jersey shore. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. There's like, there's a whole world of uh, marketing that that's really interesting and fascinating. Um, wow. Thanks, Daniel. By the way, we've talked about who should play us in movies. Shout out to our guests two pods ago. Michael Imperioli should play you in your movie, Cass. Should play me? Yeah. Yeah. We both have like a very cool uh, big dick energy. Mm. <laughs> what would you say about that? That statement? Okay. <laughs> the, you know, they made a joke about him on Sopranos that he's the only guy who could smoke a cigarette in the rain and the cigarette doesn't get wet. Did oh. anybody ever say that to you about your uh, when no. you were a smoker? No, that's a cool... That's a great cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. No one's just, ever said that. Just about the guy me. with a big nose. <laughs> oh, it's a nose thing. Yeah. What do you think it was? I just thought wow. he was like so cool. This is how dumb I now I'm having my Jamie <laughs> moment. Whoa. Guys, I'm, I'm trying Whoa. over here. Guys. I even got that oh. one. Holy shit. Right away. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I mean, I can tell by the way how chicken nuggets and boneless wings are. <laughs> I can tell that it wasn't translating because you looked at me and were like, whoa, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought, was like, no, they're saying I thought it was not. Like how he like not even the rain can get him wet. He's that cool. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. OK, well, guess what? Uh, speaking of Michael Imperioli, here's an email from, oh, let's see, this guy's name is Philip Lerner. This is Phil from Long Island, by the way. This is mm. our boy. Uh, you sniff that one out? This, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, he says, hi, gang. Now that was a motherfucking pod. Ooh. Speaking of our Michael Imperioli pod. That was fucking podding, lady and gentlemen. Mm. What you did with Imperioli, the beauty of it was hearing the three of you, former Sopranos castmates, hey, cast, <laughs> sharing your experiences from the show and asking each other questions. And Rob, I like the way you started off asking MP how he prepares for his podcast, something I was curious about. It's always interesting hearing behind the scenes stuff, but especially when it's a conversation between cast members. Rob, that was a great nugget hearing how they shot the Puerto Rican day parade on 92nd street. It had to be surreal since you grew up near there. Also, I think you did a great job when Blanca broke up with AJ because I really felt his pain of breaking up. That's a sign of great acting when it's believable stating the obvious. And Rob, I still would like to hear about shooting the scene of AJ trying to kill himself in the pool. Jamie, I enjoyed your appearance on talking Sopranos and how you talked about your last scene. Love and best wishes, Phil. Um, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but yeah, Jamie was on Talking Sopranos uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. Check that out if you haven't. And I'll be coming up. I recorded it uh, yesterday. Or maybe I shouldn't say. I don't know. Maybe Don't Please. say you heard that, guys. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's a tease. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm coming up on uh, I'm Talking <laughs> Sopranos. Soon. I don't think it's a big secret. Uh, Jamie, I don't think oh. you know who I am. I'm uh, sorry. Thanks, Phil. Um, Thanks, Phil. And by the way, that's Phil from October 5th. Phil has not emailed us since then, and I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried. I'm not. This person says I dated Jamie technically. Remember we teased that a couple weeks ago? We never read it. Oh, did we not read that? Where's that one? I really hope you were going to forget His last name looks like somebody you dated. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Okay. Oh, this is bullshit if this is what it is. I have to ask Rob, do you say Sopranos in pajama differently on purpose? Yeah. yeah. Every time I say those words, I consciously say, I'm going to say these different on purpose. Next question. This guy's rubbing you the wrong way already. <laughs> well, because I think he did a little baby switch with the title. Yeah. I never liked anyone you dated, Yami, except for Cutter. You know, he hits you and you're a very strong personality. <laughs> and I can imagine you being corrected and saying, fuck that. I'll say it like this forever because you tried correcting me. 
I've never heard those words pronounced like that until the <laughs> podcast. Bug me at first, but now I know you from this, and I think you're great. P.S. I dated a girl once because I thought she looked like Jamie. P.P.S. I lived in Vegas for four years, went back years later, and sat at the same table as you and got smoked in two hands. One pocket tens, then got pissed and had my bluff called. P.P.P.S. The other guy is hilarious. Thanks. Thanks, Joseph. You smoked this guy. Went back. Yeah, later, Robert. Sat at the same poker table as you and got smoked in two hands. Hmm. That sounds right. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, he won, me, he back won over, me over. Huh? Yeah, he's the legend is growing about <laughs> no, your. Brother. I don't, I don't say those words differently on purpose, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a mistake. Uh, this one's interesting. This got a good uh, subject. It's why do guys jerk off? It's from uh, Jessica. <laughs> Hello, all. I recently, freedom. <laughs> I recently discovered the Pajama Pants podcast. I've been binge watching for the past few days. I noticed that the fellows are pretty open about jerking off. I have a boyfriend who was single for a few years before we met, and he got involved with some fetish people in hardcore porn. I don't like that he watches porn at all. I am a monogamist and kind of view watching porn as cheating. I don't even understand why a guy needs to jerk off when he's in a relationship and getting regular sex. Can you address why men seem to ha seem to have to watch porn or even jerk off? Like what would happen if a guy were to not jerk off for a month? Would he nut in his sleep? or be constantly popping boners or become aggressive and violent. I would really appreciate if you could shed some light on this subject for the ladies. Best regards, Jessica. I actually would like your answer on this as well, because I'm not threatened by like if Cutter watches porn at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that porn, like I'm, I don't think it's necessarily a terrible thing. Uh, but what is it? Like, what, why do you want, why do you need to watch porn? Like, I don't need to watch porn necessarily, you know? Right. Well, here's the deal, right? There are never times where you make advances at Cutter and he's thinking, oh, I wish she wouldn't touch me right now. <laughs> and you've said many times that that seems sure. to be what, when Cutter sure. tries to snuggle up to you, sometimes you're like, oh, I just don't want to be touched. Yeah. So you want yeah. the fit, you know, you, these, you see these broads who are like, blah, 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 like do, do this, everything. They don't like, they, they, a porn star never says, hey, don't touch me. Leave me alone. You know, it's like it's always open. I mean, there's many reasons, but I think that's one. Um, I, I'm going to quote. I don't know if I can actually quote him word for word. But Dr. Drew was asked this question a lot back in the day on Loveline. And his answer was always the same. Um, it was it's it's a bi it's a biological need. Um, a lot. It has nothing to do whether he is into his partner sexually or not. It's just something that he needs to do. And we, we need to do. And it doesn't mean that it's like, uh, we're attracted to like other people like besides you doesn't mean we're attracted less to you. It's just something that happens. And like, it's different than sex. And sometimes it's like, it's just easier. And, uh, it means, like we're just getting things out. Otherwise, it will come out in our sleep mm -hmm. um, in a nocturnal emission. And <laughs> a lot of times, like I love when you get medical, babe. it helps you go to sleep. It helps you feel less. Yes. If, if I'm feeling stressed, sometimes it, it really helps uh, de-stress. There's all kinds of things. And it's not a, um, you know, it, it's not saying anything about how he feels about his partner in his relationship. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I do think that you can go overboard with porn. I do think that some people get addicted to it, um, but it is not like they're not mutually exclusive. It's not I watch porn so I can't have sex and it's not I'm having sex so I can't watch porn. The right. two are kind of like in balance sometimes. Um but I do think the longer you're with somebody, it tends to be more like if I'm just dating somebody for a couple of weeks, the chances of me like being like, I'm going to rub one out are very slim. Right. Compared to. Yeah. If I'm with somebody for two years and it just hits me to jerk off. I'm like, OK, yeah, let's. let's yeah. 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 There is. There are like different ups and peaks and valleys with it. I think. In, and when I you're think in the masturbating when you're in a relationship is like healthy. Like, I think it like keeps your sex life healthy to like. Yeah still have that connection with yourself because I think that can only help your, yeah. when you're with your partner. I think women should be doing it for as sure. well. Like I think each person should be doing it. You know, it's, it's like, you got to keep your pipes working and in order. Can Gabby do a little, the more, you know, thing? Yeah. Gabby. Dun, 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 dun. Powers activate. 
Yeah, that was great, Cass. Wow. I think there's I think there's something you've got to ask yourself, Jessica, about what is it about it that bothers you so much? Ooh, flipping it on her. Good job, babe. And I'm not I'm not trying to flip. I'm just no, like if, if <laughs> <laughs> do it slower. Flip it on her. If it's bothering you that much, and there might you might want to like uh, investigate that a little bit because it's like a kind of a very natural part of being a human being. I think we all need to be just a little more understanding these days. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, but it's funny that he got involved with some fetish people. <laughs> so what's that mean? Now, yeah. like that might be something to worry about. Like uh, if Rob were to get involved with fetish people, I'd have questions for him. What I'd want to know what like is, why. I want more what you... details. Well, there's not yeah. a bunch of people pushing anime on me. That's right. I mean, that's right. Uh, we, might, we might be a little worried about you, babe. That's, all right. That Was that a cry for help that we missed in the beginning of the pod? Yeah, it could be. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not going to do anything about it, but it's good to know, you know, Jessica, thank you so much for the question. That was a great question. Is there stuff that you, cause I, I was thinking about this the other day and I forgot all about it. Like stuff that you used to do when you were younger, like the teenage years, especially where you're like, Oh my God, when did that, like that just disappeared? Huh? Like I remember if there were like five people somewhere and like six seats or like whatever, like five seats. And it was like, oh, if one was like a wax seat or whatever, if you were getting up to go somewhere, you'd be like, oh, one five. And that meant like nobody could sit in your seat for 15 minutes. That like that was your spot or like, wow. dude, like like if somebody was rolling a blunt, we'd be like, oh, deuces. And somebody be like, Trey. And that meant like I go second, I go third because they didn't want to be like the fifth person on the blunt. See, it's like a, the shotgun in a car, you know, when someone's like shotgun and there's yeah. four people like if I went through a yellow light, I would have to kiss the go like this and then put it on the roof of my car. We did that. We did that. I what only was the gave meaning? that up recently. I don't know. I think we'd raise our hand like we'd raise our hands or so like the camera hands could... off the wheel tunnels. <laughs> when you drive through a tunnel, we would do that. Hands off the wheel. No, we'd like honk the horn. I think it was honk the horn. Oh, that's not annoying. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, some of the stuff's annoying. Oh, it is for do. sure. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think there's a there's an email here about <clears throat> the Dave Chappelle thing. I think since we got into a kind of a conversation with Joey Diaz about uh, maybe not knowing what exactly it was in the special that offended or, uh, yeah. you know, maybe just needing more information. This one um, seems like she has an opinion about it. It's called uh, the subject is concerned for the pajama gang, okay. which is us. In reference to your discussion on the Dave Chappelle controversy, I just wanted to point out that the upset isn't over the fact that he is simply making jokes and people are offended by it. It makes a huge difference when you explicitly state that you are Team TERF, which stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminists. This is a statement that tells that you do not believe in human rights for a transgender person. It is simply hurtful and disgusting. It's not comedy to say that someone who associates with another gender isn't a proper human is ridiculous. I understand that it's just a conversation, but in your recent pod, I feel like this point was completely missed. And as much as I love your show, if you think that people I love are lesser beings just because they are different, then I have a huge issue with that and just think that people should love and support one another and not demean them for being different. I'm not overly offended by a joke. I'm not overreacting. I'm just sad. I'm sad that people can have that much hate and disgust in their heart towards another human who just wants to belong in the world and be themselves. I hope that you all can understand this point of view. I don't want to cancel anyone. I want everyone to be included and feel safe in this world. Association with Team Turf is clearly dismissing transgender as deserve, deserving human rights, and it's just fucked up to me. Thanks. Hope you can see where I'm coming from and why I wanted to bring it up. I'm so uh, glad you. you brought it up. Thank Very you. Very glad. Yeah. And you're right. We did not really, I, I didn't really uh, no. break. I didn't once hear us talk about uh, Dave Chappelle saying he was on team turf, which no. to, be honest, heard of that. to be honest, I, I didn't like, it didn't stick with me after the special. So, uh, but obviously, what does it mean? It means it stands for trans exclusionary radical feminists. Can we look that up or do you know what that is? Um, sure. I can look it up. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't want you to ever listen to this pod and be like, oh, those people uh, hate transgender because no. that's definitely uh, of course, not the case. My argument is more for and it's not even an argument. It's just the way I feel is like everybody should be able to express their opinion. I don't like the idea of people trying to quiet 
people's opinions because what happens when it's the opinion that you don't agree with, right? Like it feels uh-huh. like, yeah, those people shouldn't be allowed to say that. And that's great when, you know, like people speaking out against fucking Trump. It's like those people felt like they could scream that stuff from the rooftops. And then when somebody from that side wants to say something, it's like, you shouldn't be allowed to say that. It's like, I, I don't know. It's it's a lot. It's sure. a lot to talk yeah, about. Yeah, but I think this is and- about like denouncing people's like who they are. You know what I mean? And how they identify themselves in this world. And um, I take responsibility of, yeah, speaking about something that I really actually didn't watch and didn't know and I still haven't watched. And so I apologize for um, not fully understanding the situation and what was said um, because I know that the the whole – reaction to Dave Chappelle and there was like a big walkout, I think at Netflix from what I heard, like a staff walkout that happened today. Yeah. It happened today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I am, yeah, I think I need to be more careful about speaking out about things until I fully understand. And, you know, I would like to think that, you know, we've made it clear how, um, yes. And I I think much of allies we are, you know, but totally. but I'm OK saying it again. With that being said, like w- I'm thank you for the email. Um, a turf is a, a feminist who excludes the rights of transgender women from their advocacy of women's rights. Ah, Turfs are a minority in American feminist discourse concentrated primarily among older second wave feminists who came of age amidst the women's liberation movement of the 70s and 80s. Uh, in the U.S., the anti-transgender movement, like the anti-gay movement, is mostly driven by religious conservatives and often comes bundled with anti-feminism. So I, I think the term TERF has a sort of like anti-transgender, mm-hmm. which is great to know. And I think being able to like learn this stuff and like the fact that I don't think I would have Googled this otherwise, like. What people watch us do on this pod, like watch the Chappelle special, comment on it with Joey Diaz, maybe like just not be totally uh, enlightened or totally knowledgeable about the subject, but still talk about it, but open to uh, understanding more about the thing is like the right way to do it. We're not hardline in our no in our position in any way. Um, and we're okay. Like we'll admit when we make mistakes or don't like totally understand the thing I have, I'm a goddamn idiot when it comes to most of the stuff, but I, I do one thing I don't want to come across as just somebody who's like against a group of people. If, if, if that makes any sense, I don't think we've ever come across anything at le- except the Chinese. Like- well, <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm even open to the idea of like the Chinese being a people that are OK, like they contribute and aren't trying to take over the world. We there's so many cameras in this house. I could pull you saying very opposite opinions of that. If you would give me access, Do you want to cancel me, if you'd give me access to your the code, you're not canceled already. Canceled he kind of yeah, he did kind of cancel himself there for a bit. But now look at him. He's a big right, talk show. Tell him what's going on with G4, babe. What's what's going on? Kasim had Guys. a birthday. Happy birthday, Cass. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank great. you so much. It was great. A lot of you guys were on my Instagram wishing me happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for asking about G4. G4 officially launches on television November 16th. Wow. Um, and uh, we are working really hard to uh, come up with what that's going to look like and what that means, but it's going to be available. We're going to be live on Twitch and YouTube, and then our shows will get edited down and air on uh, cable on TV. Are they inclusive over there? I mean, they got a, a Jordanian. Yeah. They let me through the door. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 For sure. That's it feels inclusive. They are on the tip (laughs) of the spear of (laughs) inclusivity. Great. Like the venom. Yeah. So for those of you that are into or remember G4 from back in the day or like, you know, video games, there's somebody out there who likes Sopranos and video games. And if you guys are into it and you remember old G4, I don't know. You couldn't do it. You couldn't get into Sopranos. So maybe there's not. Right. You love film and TV and people say it's one of the best shows of all time. Yet you still 
could not bring yourself to watch it. So maybe there's not a single because if there was going to be one, I think you'd be the tip of that spear, pal. And you're not. I thought you liked me better that I didn't watch the show. I thought you liked that about me. I don't care. It just works right now. You know, it works right now. Right? Yeah, yeah, it works right now. <laughs> Who cares about our friendship? We're yeah. podding. No, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> now, we're absolutely. now we're podding. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, you got to figure out those. Uh, I don't have to figure those out. accents. I don't <laughs> No, I'm saying where they're coming from. This is just who I am. I love it. And by the way, your profile is not horrible. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> You're welcome. This guy comes over here. He builds me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Please don't even talk about it. last fucking week. I tell Casim, I go, you know, and, and Mr. Casim goes, uh, I just want to be the guy who, who's always adding. What's the thing you say? You're like, I don't want to be someone who takes away. Like, I've, I've been around people who add. I'm oh, like, and the, when I was talking about on the pod? No, no, no. You've said before, like, some like some people bring negative stuff into the conversation. Some people, like we said, like Bryce, he just always kind of adds. He never, like, takes over. He never, like, drags people down or whatever. Right. Okay, he contributes. Yeah. yeah, so I'm leaving here, and I go, Cass, guess what, man? I go, the last couple of weeks, I found this new spot. I've just been taking an Uber there by myself and I go and I have lunch and I sit outside. It's a beautiful thing. And Kazim looks at me for a long time. He goes, that's sad. <laughs> so I left here and that's where I was going. That's why I told him about it. And then I'm sitting at the table eating and I go, well, this is sad, huh? <laughs> so now I'm just why sitting there sad? going, my life is sad. Uh, I don't know because he saw sad. he saw something bringing me joy. Yeah. And he had. He but you felt- like, no, you like that dynamic. <laughs> You like the that odd couple thing that we got. Yeah, always adding. That's what no, they call. No, them. you're great, and I love everything you do. <laughs> no, you hated it. I love. You're like you're a fucking loser for that. This is the best part of my week every week. <laughs> love, I love being here, and uh, I love you guys supporting the pod, following us on Instagram, and uh, following us on YouTube, hitting the subscribe button, clicking the notification bell, and our subreddit. You know, it's got it's, it's being uh, resurrected by. You know, solely by Bella Diviante. Yes. Thank you, Bella. We She's see on the tip you. of the spear. And Moist Dog 69, who hey. Jasm, what's who's the, other the one? mod there? There's one other one, like Jasm. Yeah, a lot of good people mm. on yeah, the Zoom? subreddit. Go vi- if you guys are on Reddit, go visit the subreddit, r slash pajama pants podcast. And uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, the pajama pants is on Instagram and Twitter. Jamie's on Instagram and Twitter. Rob's off the grid. Anything else? Closing closing words? Remarks? No, we were pod. That was a great pod, guys. Bye. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. We were pod. Shaman out. <laughs> <laughs>